Walt Disney World in Florida can be crowded. It can be really crowded. And while Disney might have you believe that the only way to beat these crowds is to pony up and pay the extra for the Disney Genie Plus system, I think there might just be another way. So in this video, I'm gonna be using my over 30 years experience of visiting Walt Disney World to tell you some of the tactics I have used over the years to help get the better of those crowded days at Walt Disney World and not the other way around. Okay then, so the first tactic I wanna talk about, and this one is completely free, but it does require a little bit of personal sacrifice in the shape of getting up early, and that is getting to the theme parks for what Disney likes to call rope drop. So what we mean by rope drop is getting to Disney World before the park is officially open. Now what Disney do these days is they tend to control the crowds by letting people some way into the various theme parks. So let's take Magic Kingdom as an example. You're allowed into the park, you can go up Main Street USA all the way to the hub, but then you are stopped from entering the individual lands by a rope. Now come opening time, what happens is the rope is literally dropped, hence rope drop, and it allows people to flood into the various different areas of the parks and get to the, the rides, the attractions and what have you. So the thing is with getting there for rope drop, although you do have to forego that lie in, you are going to be able to get a lot of rides done before the crowds get really busy at Magic Kingdom, for example, or any other park. I mean, I'm just using Magic Kingdom as an example here. Usually what happens at Magic Kingdom is lots and lots of people run for the Seven Dwarfs Mine Train, instantly goes to like a 45 minute wait. Generally, that is probably going to be the shortest. You'll see that line all day. So if you want to get it done, that is certainly a way to do that. On the other hand, if perhaps you've ridden Seven Dwarfs Mine Train or perhaps you're not interested, you can usually get quite a few rides in before lunch with kind of very short wait times. Another ride that gets a really long wait during the day is the Jungle Cruise. I think it's just by virtue of the fact that it doesn't take a lot of people and it's quite a long ride. So if that is a ride that you want to do, Rope Drop can be a really good time to do it. Of course, anything else for that matter. Big Thunder's usually a walk on, stuff like that. Peter Pan's Flight, another one, that gets very busy during the day. When you're rope dropping it, you can usually, no way, five minute wait, something like that. So you kind of pick your ride that you want to go on first. So there is a little bit of planning involved, you need to prioritize, but then you can usually get quite a bit done. And then as the crowd starts, to, to, to get busy later on. You can hit up some of the less popular stuff or the stuff that um, you know is, is good, but takes a lot of people, like People Mover, my favorite ride in the park, I think, probably, People Mover these days. Um, oftentimes, not a long wait for that because it's an Omni Mover and it just loads people constantly. So do that stuff later on, maybe don't do it right away. Uh, but yeah, rope drop, great technique to really beat the crowds if you don't mind getting up early. The one exception to the rope drop rule that I might just throw in here as a little aside is I've found is Animal Kingdom Park. Now Animal Kingdom, yes, getting there for rope drop, you can certainly get the same benefits that you do at other theme parks like short waits and stuff like that. But the other thing is with Animal Kingdom, because it tends to close earlier than all of the other theme parks, in my experience, it tends to empty out much earlier as well. So literally, by the time it gets to kind of that late afternoon stage, three, four o'clock, lots of people are moving on to other theme parks, which means that Animal Kingdom can end up pretty darn empty. And in fact, if you can stay there till the end, oftentimes, basically all of the rides are walk-ons. I mean, the one time, you know, during the day, you might have an hour wait for, say, Everest. Before closing, that ride is a walk-on. And, and we've done it many times. I think in the last half hour of the park, we rode it like five, six times or something, because we just kept going round and round and riding it again and again. So Animal Kingdom is potentially the exception to the getting up early rule that you could probably get away with going very late to that park. But otherwise, yeah, road drop's a good idea. All right, the next technique that I like to use, especially with the family there, is I'm gonna say eat your meals at odd times of the day. And what I mean by this is don't wait, you know, you, you know that like 12 till two, those restaurants are gonna be absolutely packed at the theme parks. But they open earlier than that. They tend to open at like 10.30, 11 a.m. depending on the restaurant. Now I know it might seem strange going for your lunch at 10.30 or 11 a.m. But if you can, do because it's going to save you just tons of time later on standing in line for, for just getting food. Also, as an aside to this, mobile ordering uh, is a really good way to cut the, the lines down at any time of day. So if you don't fancy going early or maybe super late, you know, leaving it till three, four o'clock to, to get your lunch, then the other way to kind of circumvent the lines a little bit is to use the mobile order system certainly cuts down on your time just stood there hanging around waiting for food to be ready okay the next one that i want to talk about back to rides now and that is that you should look if there's a single rider line now single rider lines can be a fantastic way of getting on rides more quickly again going back to expedition everest at animal kingdom almost always a decent line for that ride during the day 30 40 50 an hour 
but they do have a single rider line, which oftentimes might be like five minutes, 10 minutes, something like that. So it can be a fantastic way of getting on that ride more quickly, if you don't mind being separated from your party, or if in fact you're there on your own. Don't stand in the normal line, get in the single rider line, save yourself some time. The other thing, downside to single rider lines, I would say, uh, especially on rides like Smuggler's Run at Hollywood Studios, is that by riding the single rider line, you do miss out a lot of the theming of that ride because obviously the queue line has been made super interesting. There's lots of theming, there's pre-shows. If you go the single rider line, none of that. You just get herded straight to the front of the line. And, and so you're gonna miss out on that a little bit. So you kind of, you make your choices, but single rider lines can be a really good free way to get shorter lines on some attractions. All right, another technique that is again particularly applicable to the uh, Magic Kingdom is going to do attractions that usually have very long lines during major events. I'm talking specifically now about the fireworks. If you go to try and do a ride while the fireworks are happening or even after the fireworks, you will almost certainly find a reduced line to what you would have seen during the day because that fireworks show is just such a huge draw for people. It draws so many people away from other attractions and into the hub to watch the fireworks. There's just less people to stand in line and it's fantastic. Also, after the fireworks, many people do go home, but oftentimes the Magic Kingdom might stay open for another 30 minutes, hour, two hours. It depends, it depends what their opening times are. And what you do find is that a lot of people like to end their day at the fireworks and leave which means less people in the park and shorter lines. So if you can forego the fireworks or maybe you've seen them a million times before or you're just not bothered, then that can be a really good way to get on some rides uh, more quickly. Of course, other theme parks are still applicable. Epcot has fireworks, of course, but Epcot does tend to close at the time the fireworks are kind of kicking off. What I would say to do there is it still draws a lot of people in. You can sometimes get in right, like we did it recently, we went on Frozen. Um, because we'd seen the fireworks many times before. People were kind of sucked away to watch the fireworks show and uh, we, we jumped on Frozen with like a short wave, it was like 20, 20 minutes or something like that, which for that ride is quite short uh, because it can get up there. Even now, it's been open I think six years now, still just as popular. So just bear that in mind, if you're not bothered about fireworks, so you've seen them a lot of times before, that can be a really good opportunity to ride some rides. Speaking of fireworks, and again, I am specifically talking about the Magic Kingdom now, and it can certainly get very crowded there in the hub. So if you want to beat the crowds, consider perhaps watching the fireworks from elsewhere in the park. Now, obviously there are some disadvantages to this. There are projections on the uh, castle itself, so you're not going to see them if you're anywhere other than in the hub. But if you're there for the, the, the fireworks and not so much for the projections, you can still hear the music and see the fireworks from lots of other locations all around the park. My personal favorite is actually behind Cinderella Castle in New Fantasyland, where actually a lot of the fireworks are launched from, they're actually launched from the, the, the roofs of the buildings in New Fantasyland, a lot of them. And uh, you can get an absolutely fantastic view of the fireworks there. And of course you can still hear the music, but you will miss out on the projections. But I will say, much less crowded. So if you're just the sort of person who's like, I don't like crowds, but I really want to see some fireworks, you can still enjoy them. But from elsewhere in the park, you will just miss out on those projections though. The next thing I want to talk about is when closing time comes around, resist the temptation to just head for the door as quickly as possible. Every fiber of your being is going to be telling you to get, get there before everybody else, just get to the monorail, get to the ferry boat, get to the car park so you can get out as quickly as possible because you don't want to get stuck in all that traffic. You could do that, but it's a bit stressy. What I like to do is just chill out a bit. Chill out a little bit. Find somewhere quiet um, to just sit down and people watch for, for a little bit. Soak up the, the ambience of the night, you know, the music still be playing and stuff like that, where people file out. Or maybe this will be an opportunity for you to take a, take a breather and have a wander around and look at some details that you've missed during the day at like World Showcase in Epcot or, or you know, um, Main Street uh, or, or the hub area at the Magic Kingdom. I'm not talking about trying to be the last person in the park and stopping all the staff from going home because that's, don't do that, please don't do that. But what I am talking about is just resist that initial temptation to run for the door. I've done it where you bolt for the door and sometimes it works out and sometimes it doesn't. But what I've found is if you just spend that little bit of extra time and just sit there and just relax a bit. First of all, much more relaxing, much less stressful. 
And secondly, when you actually do go to leave, the vast majority of people are already gone and you're gonna just find it a lot less stressful trying to get out of those theme parks. You know, you don't wanna get stressed out and angry. You had a lovely day. Just take your time. Okay, and finally, I did just want to mention, of course, that if you are staying at any of the Disney resorts, don't forget, you're going to get those early access uh, hours to the parks. It's usually 30 minutes. I think that's every day. And it's at any of the hotels, whether you're staying at a deluxe resort or a, 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 a value resort, you're going to get access to that. But of course, if you are staying at a deluxe resort, don't forget, you get access to those extended evening opening hours, which are fantastic. It's very, very quiet during that time. So do consider that when you're making your booking, whether you're gonna stay in a, uh, where you're gonna stay, if you're staying on site at Disney, if you are staying at a deluxe resort, don't forget you can use those hours. Uh, and I would highly recommend that you do so because in my experience, the parks are virtually empty during those last couple of hours. So there you go, thanks so much for watching this video. Hopefully I've given you an idea on how to beat the crowds at Walt Disney World without having to resort to buying Disney Genie Plus. If you found this video helpful or at least enjoyable, leave it a thumbs up on your way out and perhaps consider subscribing to the channel for more content like this. I'll see you in the next one.